Hello everybody, welcome to this video in which we're going to talk about organ registrations for repertoire. So when you're presented with a new piece of organ music, the first thing that you'll need to do before you start playing it is decide what stops you're going to choose. First of all, you'll need to think about the character of the music you're playing, whether it's grand, and bright and majestic, or whether it's soft and introspective, or perhaps it has a light, humorous character, or perhaps it's something more serious. And all of these moods will suggest different types of sonorities, different combinations of stops. You also need to think what the composer was likely to have expected, what kind of sound he or she might have imagined when they were writing the piece. And if the score doesn't tell you, you'll have to use your imagination. But even if the score does tell you, you're still going to have to adapt what's written to your own organ. Chances are the stops that the composer suggests, particularly if they were a composer from a different country or a different era, you won't have exactly the same stops that they had. First of all, let's talk about solo stops. So perhaps your piece has a solo melody within it, and the melody occurs in the right hand or in the left hand, and it doesn't cross over with the other hand. You have an opportunity for a solo stop. And really, almost any stop on the organ can be a solo stop, or any combination of stops could be a solo sound. Unless the composer indicates otherwise, you're probably going to want to use eight foot pitch as the basic pitch of your solo stop or solo combination. So straight away on an organ like this, you have so many different combinations. You can use a solo open diapason, you can use a solo string stop, you can use a solo flute stop, you can use a solo reed of different characters depending on whether you want a brash effect, you might want a trumpet, or you might want something softer, a clarinet or an oboe. You can experiment with those and you'll also then need to find an accompaniment to go with the left hand or right hand, the part that's playing the accompaniment. You'll need to find a registration that suits that sound that is sufficiently different so that it doesn't sound the same, but also balances in dynamic. So for example, if I want to use the clarinet as a solo, I'm going to have to find an accompaniment that balances with it. Let's just imagine that there's no pedal part to worry about. This is just a solo for melody in right hand, accompaniment in left hand. The clarinet is not a very loud stop, it's not a very quiet stop, it's something in between. So we need to find an accompaniment that's going to match that. So we could try the open diapason on the swell. The benefit of using the swell to accompany your solo is that you can control the volume with the swell box. I think that works very nicely. Perhaps you want a more delicate accompaniment, in which case you might use the flute on the swell. Though you may find that just a little bit too pale in colour, that it doesn't really match the intensity of the clarinet. There are so many options there to experiment with. Let's now try a different solo stop. Let's try the oboe on the swell. Having this as a solo is also very flexible because we can use the swell box to change the dynamic. So we can make the melody balance with the accompaniment here. The problem with using the swell for your solo is that you're going to have to find something quite quiet on your other manual. 
If you're playing a two manual organ, you'll only have the grate. You may not have any quiet stops at all. Here, if we're going to use the grate, we could use the carabella, a flute stop. So even with the swell box open, the accompaniment is really swamping the oboe. So I don't think that's going to work. That's not very well balanced, because if you have a solo line, you want the solo line to stand out. On this organ, we're very lucky because we have lots of quiet stops on the choir. We have the Dulciana, for example. But if you don't have a quiet stop like that on your second manual, if you've only two manual organ, then you might find it more difficult to create that balance. It is important that whatever solo stop you use, that it will stand out and that the accompaniment won't swamp it. You can use combinations of a couple of stops together, particularly stops of the same family as a solo. So for example, we could have eight foot and four foot flute on the grate, and we could have the open diapason on the swell as the accompaniment. That balances very well. You can experiment on your own organ to find as many combinations as possible. You can also use several stops, perhaps of the same family, of different pitches as a solo registration. For example, you could use the eight foot and four foot flute on the grate with the open diapason on the swell as the accompaniment. That balances very nicely. It's a characterful bright sound in the right hand, the solo, and then it's a more sedate sound in the left hand, and one that you can control with the swell box. So on your own organ, you might like to try a few different combinations, experiment with as many different solo and accompaniment registrations as you can find. Another trick that is quite useful, particularly if you can't find a solo that really balances perfectly with what you want, perhaps you want to have an open diapason sound, but your open diapason is ever so slightly too loud, like this. and that your accompaniment is just being swamped by that sound a little bit, what you can do is play stops up or down the octave. So we could use the four foot principle on the grate, but instead play it an octave down, so it's playing in the same range as the eight foot principle. You may find that these stops, even though they belong to the same family, have a much different character in different ranges. So you might find that a four foot stop played down an octave is like a whole extra solo stop on the organ. Likewise, you can play a 16 foot stop up an octave. That is, if you have a 16 foot stop on the manual, we have just one on this organ, the contrafagotto on the swell. And if you play that up an octave, you get quite an effective bassoon sound. I'm going to use this stop with the stop diapason on the choir as an accompaniment. That's quite a convincing bassoon sound, whereas if you were to play that stop in a lower range, it would really be too muddy and it wouldn't really work effectively on the melody.